WRHU Hempstead, my name is Juliana Iavino, and this is Alternative Nation on 88.7 FM Radio Hofstra University. Today, I am joined by Mad Gallagher. Coming from North Carolina, Mad is also a singer and keyboardist and composer. He has a few singles out on music streaming platforms now, with her newest being a duet version of her song Souls on Fire with Chris Harms from Lords of the Lost. Med is joining me today to talk about her debut album, Enter the Vortex, that she is creating with the help of Hayden Scott. The album is being crowdfunded on Kickstarter and as of March 7th has reached its goal, so a very big congrats to her for that. Before we get started, though, I'd like to give you a chance to introduce yourself, so if you could state your name and tell all of the WRHU listeners a little bit about yourself. All right. Yeah, I'm Mad Gallica. Um, some people call me Mad. Some people call me Dylan. And I'm just an independent artist trying to make it in this world and get my music out there. And I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about it today. Thank you so much, Jules. Thank you. Now, to start us off, talk to me a little bit about Enter the Word Text. Can you explain this to me, uh, the album? And I know you have so much more planned for it other than just the songs. Yes. Oh my gosh. I could talk about this for a really long time. <laughs> it's very elaborate. There's so many elements to this. Uh, basically, I wrote it around a decade ago. I was really, really sick for about three years and I was bedridden. And while I was laying in bed on and off for three years, I started to go into a place in my mind that I called the in-between. I don't know if you've been really sick before or even had fever dreams. You're kind of slipping in and out of reality. And that is actually where I started to write this music, is in between realities in this weird fever-like state. I saw lots of different characters that started to come to my mind. And I started to see this kind of rose nebula, this Gallica rose, <laughs> hence my name, out in space. And I would go there in my mind and escape my body that was very ill and just go into this dreamlike state there and write this music. And so that's a little bit about Enter the Vortex. I enter the vortex in my mind, so to speak. Wow. Well, I'm glad you're okay now, definitely. But since it has been a little bit of time, why now? Why release this now? <laughs> that is that is such a good question. I think it's because I have struggled on and off with belief in myself and chronic self-doubt over the years. And I think this music was waiting for the right time to come out. And I had kind of put it away in my mind. I mean, it's it's a huge project. There's, you know, over 30 songs written for this. And I had put it away in my mind for a while. And during the pandemic, when the world was ill, I started to go back to that place and remember the music. And it just started to pour out of me again over the pandemic. And I think that's such a gift of the pandemic. We were able to be quiet for a little while and go within and that's really what this music is about is going to the great beyond within ourselves for answers and so i started working on this music again and i played it for my friend sophie who i did the live stream with um and we toured together as well and she as well as my friend laura scarborough um who also is one of my dear friends they were just like you've got to get this music out this you have to get this out and I respect them so immensely that I was like wow you know if you guys think there's something to this music then maybe there is it's very different it's very orchestral and non-formulaic I mean the first song is seven minutes long of just this beautiful chaos in a way and so Hayden Scott uh, who are also really dear friends within tour with quite a bit we had discussed, you know, writing music together, working on music together for a while. And I pitched him a ton of music. I mean, all my singer songwriter music, like just varying styles. I, I write all the time and just I had this inner nudge. You've got it. You've got to also show him this music. And it was scary. And, you know, Sophie and Laura really helped me with that too. It was so scary because it's the maddest part of my music. It's the weirdest, wildest, craziest part of my music that, I think I doubted for a long time would resonate with anybody. And 
So I, I sent it to Hayden. I was like, you know, we're going to, this is music. I just want you to know it's a huge concept. We're definitely not going to do this, of course. But, you know, just down the line, you know, I'm just, just want you to hear where my trajectory is as an artist. And this is what I really want to do in the in, you know, future. So a few weeks later, I got on the phone with him and we were talking about the music. And suddenly he's just, you know, like, well, you know, what about the, you know, the orchestra? And then there's this great organ part. And then, the, I mean, it's all the choir vocals. Like, whoa, 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 wait, Hayden. What are you talking? Are you talking about Enter the Vortex? I thought we were going to do the singer songwriter stuff. Like, what? It's like, well, yeah, Enter the Vortex. It's like, oh my God. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. And so we dove in feet first and we've been working on it ever since. And I'm so grateful that we are. I can't imagine any other way. That's amazing. I love that. That whole thing. Like, I'm, people won't be able to see me right now, but I'm smiling. I think that's awesome. And I'm so glad because. What I've heard so far, and we'll play that in a little bit, the clip that you have, but it already sounds amazing. And I know you're saying like, oh, there's still some layers added to it. And I'm like, well, geez, like if there's more to it, like this is going to be awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, it's always kind of hard to to send out music that's not finished. You know, that's just a huge no-no like in the industry. But I just want people to hear what they're like pitching or putting money towards what they are supporting. I mean, this is the trajectory and I think it's only fair. I mean, I consider the donors my label. They're my backers. I want to pr like to make them proud and get them excited about what they're supporting. And so that's why I'm I'm uh, nervously showing them um, an unfinished clip of just, you know, the idea of what we're doing. Of course. Well, like I said, I love it. I'm sure everyone else feels the same, but you did bring up the Kickstarter. So uh, talking a little bit into that, now you reached your 100% goal. Where is it going to go now, now that you have <laughs> this funding? I can't believe, like, gosh, what was it? Nine days in, 100%, and we're still going up. And that's a dream come true because, you know, I was trying to really be strategic about this. And the goal was $23,500. And that just covers the basics because the music that we're creating is very expensive to create. I mean, we are trying to hire an orchestra, just huge. And we want just the best um, engineer we can possibly find to really give it its best shot because there's so many layers. And of course I want everything to be heard and that's just really hard. It's, you know, um, so I think the, the next step is just get, like we can add more music. I mean, there's some singles that I want to put out too. And there's a song I played on the live stream that was really uh, a hit for the live stream. And it was When God is a Man. And I, I played it at the New York City show mm -hmm. as well. And so we can start to do that. We can start putting money towards Act Two, the 30 songs that are left to be created. Um, I also have an album called Perry Winkle Sky that's on the back burner. I mean, I have so much music that it's just a matter of what's the game plan, what's the best way forward. There's costumes that I can do too. And we haven't even gotten in any funding yet for the marketing, which is a huge part. So most likely any extra money at first will go straight towards marketing and like music videos. Um, all of that is so important just to get this music out there into the world and give it its best chance. Right. Of course. Well, again, I'm excited to see where this goes. Just reading through the Kickstarter, everything and you were saying like it's this big world building too, and I know you spoke about it a little in the beginning here. Can you give us some insight into that, this world building? Like what do you really see this turning into from what you imagined? Yeah, I want to bring Gallica to the world, if that makes sense. That Gallica Rose Nebula experience that I had when I was creating this music. And... I want people to explore the beyond within and be able to find those, the magic of creativity in their minds. So when I talk about big picture plans for this music, I want to create an experience. I want people to go into the vortex through meditation, through the music, whatever works for them and find, have fun creating. What do I look like when I'm not a human? What does my soul look like? What's my, like the superhero version of myself that is, you know, not even a representation here physically. What do I look like in the beyonds? And I want people to, to come dressed to the shows. 
looking like their superhero selves, um, their alien galactic selves, whatever that means to them. And I want to, you know, have ideally, I mean, this is big picture and it would be a massive, huge production, with a lot of money behind it, but I would love to have the orchestra with me, kind of like um, a Trans-Siberian Orchestra, I guess you could say, just bring that with me and have light up instruments and their whole theme of bioluminescence and a big pipe organ that shoots out smoke and it's a light show of its own and the costumes are light shows of their own. And we're just bringing this magical, creative, exciting playtime to people to all kind of get into this vortex trance like state with the music because that's what it does to me I get in this when I write music I get kind of in a trance when I listen to music and I'm fully present without my phone without anything in music it's magical music is magic and so that's kind of the world building that I want to do is create that magic with the audience together I love that I love that and you're definitely really getting me excited for this so I can't wait to see again where this all comes to and I, I'm a former theater kid, so I love all the big production and everything. Awesome. <laughs> it is very theatrical. You hit the nail on the head. It's very theatrical. <laughs> I love it. So I guess to my next question, along with some of your songs, so you said it's in parts. What are you specifically planning for this first part? Song-wise, is there a certain theme you're going for in the first part that's different from the other ones yes yes so this is act one and right now there's only five songs in act one it's the shortest of the the acts for this whole concept album and we, i wanted it to be a shorter one anyway it's long it's about 18 19 minutes of music but there's five songs and it tells the story of being initially in that in-between state where when I was really ill, there were moments I was so sick that I felt like I was dying. And I actually saw someone come into my room and I asked if I was dying and they said, yes. Yeah. So this is like the fever dream state kind of hallucinating, you know, and this is where the mad, the term mad comes from, right? A little bit mad. And I want people to embrace their madness. And I decided I had a choice. Do I leave and go home? Or do I stay here and complete my, my journey on Earth? And I chose to stay. So Enter the Vortex essentially takes place in, the, in that moment where a soul, let's say they have a near-death experience, you've heard of those, where they die and they get a choice to go home or stay on Earth. And um, this whole journey in Act One, the soul experiences a death and leaves the body and goes home and gets to see where this it came from and the journey of it's you know you hear your life flashes before your eyes it's like life flashes before your eyes but even from the very beginning when you decided to come to earth and revisiting why why did i come to earth why did i choose this life why did i choose suffering why did i choose pain you know and so act one explores that whole beginning of deciding to leave home Gallica of the Gallica Nebula and come to Earth. That's awesome. I I again I love the whole idea. I think I think it's gonna be really awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now for everyone, like we said, we have a clip of the song Dagger. Uh and before I play it, what can you tell me about that song fitting in with your ideas for Act One? How does this song have its place? This is song number three, and it is the literally the consciousness coming from the human body with the soul leading it back to Gallica. And so you can hear the big epic bum, 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 bum. It's very um, cinematic moments, space odyssey, where we are zooming in and we're seeing the Rose Nebula. And then we're going to be flying over and taking on a journey and seeing why the souls choose to to leave and, and go to earth. And there's a line in there, I don't think it's in this clip, but we are shooting stars so bright, falling from the sky like a dagger. So this is uh, where that fits into the album. I love it. So here, let me get it up for everyone so you guys can hear, if you haven't already, this is Dagger.
yeah, I get chills every time that I've listened to that so far. Just absolutely amazing. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I can't wait to get actual live strings on it and orchestration. I mean, Hayden is so good with programming and he can get it sounding like almost like the real thing, but you can only get it that far, even if you're the best at it. And there's nothing better than feeling the, like hearing the realness and the fullness of a live instrument. Like with Souls on Fire, that was an octet. And you can hear the little, even little imperfections, of the bow on certain strings and the scraping sound sometimes. And like, it's so intimate and really adds this incredible energy that I can't wait to have on this music. So this is obviously what you heard. It's like a demo version of the real thing. And I can't wait to to hear what it sounds like when we add those orchestral elements. Again, I know I keep saying it through the whole interview, but I'm super excited. And I know there's definitely a ton more people out there that are super excited to hear everything. Thank you. I just, I've been told by so many producers and artist developers, you're too theatrical, tone it down. You know, I remember one producer told me he wanted to try to reinvent me as the next Lord. I'm like, have you heard the way I, like, we don't sound anything alike. Like, what? Like, you know, it's just, people just have never known what to do with me as an artist. And until I met Hayden Scott, and he is the first person who ever has taken a chance on me and my music. And it wouldn't be made without him. This would not be happening without him. That's awesome. I'm, I'm very, very glad that you found him. He found you. You guys are able to both see this picture. And like you said, everyone that's these funders, these Kickstarter uh, supporters that were like your label. So uh, I'm glad that everyone's able to give you that freedom to be able to see what you want and not someone trying to change you. So true. It's so true. It's such a gift in that way. I mean, I find myself some days, with, you know, wearing so many hats and I get really overwhelmed and I'm just, you know, trying to be my own manager, promoter, artist, everything, you know, um, <laughs> visual artist, you know, and it's fun. And I really do find a lot of happiness in it, but it can get overwhelming. And I'm like, gosh, like, it'd be great if I had like this amazing team and I already had the money and I didn't have to worry about it. I'm like, no, like, no, this is the right way to do this because I don't think any label would listen to this music and understand it the way that the fans are. Like they, you know, like the fans really believe in me. They see the vision and it's finding its audience. And I believe this music will find its audience. And so I appreciate everyone taking a chance on me and the music. Now, with that as well, what would be your advice to someone else who is starting, someone else who has this idea and is waiting for it to come to fruition? What would you recommend or tips? Gosh, because it makes me think of myself when I was first starting out too and how scary and overwhelming it is and still can be. And I think the biggest advice I would get is the most cheesiest, most obvious advice. And it's believe in yourself. Don't, I wasted so many years hiding in my body behind, you know, it just in general, I afraid to get my music out the way I really wanted to. And it was a waste of time. And I wish more people would believe in themselves because what, what they have to create is truly special and unique and it's a gift you know when you have an idea that finds you and wants to collaborate with you and has chosen you to bring it to earth that's sacred and so when you have an idea it's it's you are a cho you're, you've been chosen by this idea and so believe in it, believe in the idea, believe in yourself, you find other people who will have your back because there will be people that will have your back. And you need that. We need, we need our own team. And I, and I do, you know, when I talk about not having a team with the label, I do have a team. I have Hayden, I have Sophie, I have Matt Goins, I have Jetty, I have Laura, I have 
my friend Sarah who helps me with the press releases. I have I have a team of people, more people that I know I haven't even named, my family. That's my team. And the, the people who have donated are my team. You're all my team. And I just feel so surrounded and not alone. So that would be, I guess, my advice is find your people and believe in yourself. I love that. I love that answer. That's that's amazing. It's great. <laughs> I, I honestly I don't even know how to follow up with that. I think that's just so amazing. That's a great thing. And definitely I hope everyone who's listening right now, again, if you heard it from bed, if you have an idea, go for it. Yeah. So we are nearing a little bit the end of our interview. Usually how I end all of my interviews is I have this box with a bunch of random questions in it, and I'm going to pick one out. I have no clue what it might be, and you can answer it. <laughs> so oh, yeah. all right. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one because, as we mentioned, you've toured a little bit. So, favorite state that you have traveled to? Ooh, it's funny. Like uh, they're all so different and beautiful in their own ways. Oh man, I love Oregon and like Northern California. Something about the in Washington. Something about that area. That's just really just gets me the the redwoods and the temperature the humidity the nature I could just walk barefoot in the woods like all day long there definitely on my bucket list of places to go especially the redwoods and everything <laughs> thank you now before we end off though is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners to your fans out there that are going to be listening to this is there anything you would like to say yes I just want to say thank you for believing in me and this music because I wouldn't be able to finish this music without you. I, I wouldn't. And like I said, I am a chronic, uh, <laughs> chronic self doubt, you know, and it's a roller coaster. And seeing everyone's comments and shares and donations really gives me that just this, this inner joy of, oh my gosh, maybe I really am doing the right thing with this. Like I, you know, I, I do think that this has an audience and this is, I'm really excited. I'm so excited that other people are, it's resonating with people already, the idea. Cause I think this music, it, it got me out of my illness, writing this and hearing it in my head, playing it on the piano whenever I could it got me out of my illness and I think music is so healing. And if I could have any gift in the world, it would be that this music and any music I put out there positively impacts people and can send some kind of healing through the sound waves. And so I just want to say thank you to the fans. And also of course, thank you to Hayden for believing in me and this project too, because he's the missing piece of this. He really is, you know, I wouldn't be making it without him. So. Thank you. And thank you for, for having me on here and believing in the music as well. I really appreciate you too. Of course, of course. Thank you for coming and talking today. And I know definitely I've spoken to a bunch of your fans and everything before this, helping me get prepared. And especially a few of my friends that I have in my group chat, I was like, oh yeah, today's the interview. And they're like, please tell Med how much we love her and everything. So <laughs> coming from all your fans, everyone, we love you and we're so excited. I feel it. It's a it's a dream come true to have any fans at all. It really is. It is such I never thought I would get to a place where people actually care what I have to say and what I have to create. And that's just so magical. And I just love you all so much. And I really hope that you all feel free to explore and express your madness within too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you again for joining me. This has been Alternative Nation with Mad Galica. I'm Juliana, and make sure to turn into Alternative Nation every weekday from noon to 3 p.m. on 88.7 FM, Radio Hofstra University. Thank you.